We're back as we pick up on the final bit of racing action from Imperial Turt and Nelspreit Casterbridge Enduro. And big thanks once again to the series partner, Seasons in Africa, bringing up the aerial shots and getting our cameraman out to these incredible vantage points. And just to show you how dense the bush is. Once again, six full weeks of marking, hacking, and making a plan to get this track going. No problems for Baron Erasmus as he runs out front and extends away from the chasing pack led by Moritz Mehring. And a bit of international styling shapes showing how to climb this terrain. Remember, Baron has been across the pond to some of the world's toughest enduros across in Europe, and it really shows. Mehring, always great to watch this kid. He's got a wonderful style on the bike as he rock and rolls it down the hill. A little bit short in leg, he always says. He says he's cursed by working with Daryl Curtis, means he has to sit on the seat way too much when he climbs, but on a descent, he is the perfect shape. Lawrence Mahoney, fastest man on the last lap though, as he closes in and starts to almost see the back wheel of Mehring. Bryce Van Heerden as well, he's done a good job to stay in fourth place and try and keep Garvey off his back wheel. But Bryce, unfortunately, this time around, is not gonna be a top three overall, but there is gonna be another one of them coming late on in the season. You just know it. He is in great form once again. Rob Garvey, one of the most friendly and confident riders you will see out there and a great ambassador for Trax KTM. Paul Krobler, the first of the pros, the pro Bs that is, as he paddles his way through. He started to get really good using the Lofel Enduros to bring home some of his best results over the last couple of seasons. Keegan Ike running the numbers up there. And Janelle de Villiers, the Cape Town kid on the VCR Arrow Racing Yamaha getting the job done to try and keep numbers on his page. Number 100, almost catching me out. I forget that Warren Barwell is now running the number 100 as he tries to get the job done in the senior class. Definitely the man to beat. And it looks like that pass will be made with Barwell and Silver running one and two, working well together. For some riders though, it was just all too much. What's going on here? I'm overeating, it's a bit odd. It's not that bad, but it's a very nice ride. But it's just odd. For a lot of events, you can see him riding that full body armor. For a lot of these extreme enduros, the riders actually tend to take off a lot of the protection just so that they don't overheat, and it's a lesson that you learn the hard way. Stefan Nivot on the 286 Raceworks KTM getting chased down by the king of quads, your reigning national champion quad racer, Hannes Simon on the EMT KTM. And a bit of a freight train there at the checkpoint as everyone tries to get their numbers on the page. Look like Erhard Birkus, who had these problems early on in the race, is back on point and still eyeing up a top 20 placing, riding out of Vans Racing Husqvarna. Back on board with our race leader, the untouchable, the man that is on for his first low felt victory of the 2018 season, Born Erasmus, with just K's to go. What an incredible track the guys have laid out here. We were actually blown away. Most riders couldn't believe how much of the new terrain, virgin terrain, had been brought out just for this event and hats off to the Lofel Enduro Club. We know from behind the scenes that that is hours, days, and weeks of work. Lawrence Mahoney will know exactly what's gone into it. The man that runs the GXCC popular off-road racing series for cross-country racing. But to try and cut your way through Bush is tricky. Well done to the guys. Garvey's still running the numbers up there as well. So it looks like there's been a change up. He may have passed Bryce Van Heerden to move himself up into fourth place overall as the rest of the riders Try and just get the job done. Zach De Silva was through there in the Pro Bs. Ian Pinkerton just giving a little bit of a knock there as he slides on through. Very tricky and tight if you have to pass the riders in those rocks and trees. What are our green riders there? Getting a good job done there. Albert Boyens. Remember the green guys have a slightly shorter, slightly easier version of the loop. But still, it is going to be hard work. Why the riders were overheating in this kind of terrain, by the way, was just because there was just no air in the trees and very, very little breeze at the same time. So even though you're moving forwards, you can still absolutely cook. And you can understand why riders were sweating it. Vimpy Faree, another one of our green racers, looking for a top three placing there as well. As Craig McDonald does a chase down behind him. Nice to see riders aware of what's going on around them. Heinrich Aust, looks like he's got himself now up into the two spot in the high school category, trying to chase down on Ryan Pelser for the win on the day. But some riders having problems, Keith Zeman and Kenneth Bray, we catch up with them on the track. Oh, tough. 
my leg reach starts to go on in the first like two k's. That's actually Bruce Topham. So Topham, one of our big threats, having some major issues out there on the track. Ooh. <laughs> it's always funny. You, you can wave to the cameraman, but don't crash in front of the cameraman unless you desperately want to get on TV. Because as we know, that is a guarantee. Luke Smythe, one of our green racers on the J82. Doing well, stalling the bike out a little bit. And we saw a lot of guys having these problems on the rocks. Right. One of the marshals on the rocks tells us how tricky it was to mark the track. Well, we marked all the green, because the green was marked, uh, the red is GPS. So uh, marked all of this, this mamba down, up baboons, all fun, all good. The guys are going to love it. Hopefully the guys didn't see any mambas or baboons while they were out there. They probably did as they were dehydrating and overheating. Matthew Berger in the high school category, riding out of leader tread. Looks like he's having no problems out there on the track as he stays ahead of Cronier Lorden in the silver class A's. I love watching these guys. I remember commentating on Cronier Lorden a couple of years back when he was still riding in the small wheel juniors. Ivan Rue from Rekapan Landscaping, doing a nice job there. First in the seniors as well. So that is a great ride from Hannah Simon, showing no mercy to the rocks as he smashes his way down there. Chased down by Trevor Finley. Paul Geddes. Silver is in good form today. Hopping and popping. Ryan Sequeira may just squeak his way into a podium for the high schools. And he is loving the slick rock. One of the features of almost all the tracks that we run out there for the Lofeld Enduro Club race series. The Slick Rocks, very much like Moab in Utah in the US of A. By this stage, riders had absolutely nothing left. And just to the right-hand side of the camera, just out of shot, were the pits. So we were very dangerously close to home. Kenneth Bray in the Silver Bees looked like he had enough gas in the tank to run for another lap as he chased down hard towards the finish line. One more time then, up into the sky with Seasons in Africa as we look down on Bryce Van Heerden looking at, once again, another top five pro gate finish. Bryce is in good nick today. And what the race organizers did was make the last couple of kilometers nice and easy, but it's the first win of the season for Borent Erasmus as he rocks it to the top step. Results then in the breakdown. Silver Class A went to Cronier Lorden on the KTM, ahead of Tobias Norkensmeyer and Reinhard Besson. KTM's running one, two, and three. In the high school gate, Ryan Palzer gets his first big win of the season ahead of Heinrich Aust, Matty Berger, Trevor Finley, Sequera, and Topham. In the Masters gate, Otto Hallacher took the big win this time around, ahead of Dave Taylor and Brett Proud. Pro B's, Paul Krobler gets his win. Dwayne Barnard in the number two spot and Xander Goosen, third place. In the pro category, it's a confirmation win going to Barnett Erasmus ahead of Mehring and Mahoney. And unfortunately for Dwayne O'Clanums, it was a DNF, his first of the season. We caught up with the winners after the race. It was good. It wasn't too difficult. It was a bit technical. A couple of uh, spots in the red loop that were quite difficult. Very well marked, very well organized. The green loop that we did afterwards, long, flowing, great. Good all round. Well done to the organizers. The pro race winner, Baron Erasmus, was all smiles after his first victory of the season. It was quite fun out there. So it was a tough track. The beginning was very hard, very technical, which suits me good. And from there on, it started getting flowing. I knew that I got some fast riders behind me, so I just had to keep it on the pace. Uh, three laps was quite hard today. The last lap, um, fastest lap for the day, but um, had a rough time trying to um, finish that one. But overall, they, they put a good event together. It's good riding here. It's always fun. Um, love the terrain, and it's got a whole mix of everything, so it's good for everyone, and you can just learn your skill level here. I just want to thank Ambassador Foods and Radamans for helping me, sponsoring me, just keeping me on the bike and letting me do what I like doing the most. The next round of the series takes us to the 9th of June for the Hazy View Enduro. We'll be there. We hope you'll join us.
all the action from the Imperial Toyota Nelspreit Casterbridge Enduro was proudly brought to you by Imperial Toyota Nelspreit, along with our eye in the sky and our accommodation sponsor, Seasons in Africa. 